next part, Bob is putting up his completed dried canvas. Significantly less trees than what I did, but I was working on a turning surface, not a flat surface. So I don't feel too bad about this. Um, what I decided to do, because I know that he goes in and he uses some oil paints and he uses them very thinly and he brushes them over the light colored base to create color. Um, I have used a soft gloss gel. It's transparent. And it, while this is turned around, I'll show you guys the gesso. It's heavy gesso in black and white. So the same company makes a soft gloss gel that is transparent. And I squirted, can you see here, little squirts of this onto my little palette there. And I am using the dye from Illumilite.com. Right now I'm using green. I have blue and yellow out. Um, I don't know exactly what colors I'll end up using all together, but I'm using green for sure. I put one tiny drop into that clear gel and mixed it up with my paintbrush. So I'm gonna use that for this next step. Gesso in there. It really makes it very simple to do. And I think at this time you're gonna have to run the colors across the screen that you need to do yours along with us. Oh heavens to Betsy. Okay, while they're doing that, I'm gonna take a little bit of liquid clear and cover the entire canvas. Just so I'm using the soft color. gloss gel transparent to be sure in lieu of the liquid clear. I don't have that option on a cup. A thin coat, just a thin coat. Once again, allow your gesso to dry completely before you do this because you cannot mix oils and, and gesso together while you're painting. You have to let the, let the gesso dry in between. There. This is the hardest part of the whole paint. If you can put the liquid clear on, the rest of it's easy. There. But, but We're going like to see how this goes, guys. Even like this. This is very effective. People like these just in black and white. All right. My little quickly. smooches down at the bottom are not very as whimsical as his so i'm gonna add a little bit of that see how his are kind of like like he kind of got a little crazy with them i didn't and i think that that's going to be important so i'm going to go ahead and do that now a little bit with the white so that the next step that's coming up makes a little bit more sense. Okay, now I am going to have to let this dry for just a moment. It will only take a second, and I will be right back. All right, guys, here we go again. Even coat of liquid clear, clear, which we do not have. I'm just using long horizontal and vertical strokes to assure that it is distributed across the canvas evenly. I did add a tiny drop of white to one of my piles of clear. Of the liquid clear, I would take a paper towel and wipe it. What's left will be just right. Let me show you how easy this is to, I don't go in and do a small amount of phthalo blue. Okay, so I'm going to put a little drop of blue. blue. Very little paints are required for this painting. Very, very little. Into one of my piles of clear. And get a clean brush. Top. And all we're doing in reality is putting a glaze right over the top of our gesso. Isn't that fantastic? This makes some of the most gorgeous little paintings. And they're wonderful to do for friends and family because they'll just be amazed at how fast they happen. 
at how fast so they happen. Drag them down to just the tops. Of these little bushy looking things that we made. There. This liquid clear is one of the neatest things we've ever come up with. It really does work. Now. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a deep blue. Now the edges of it, I'm going to take a little Prussian blue. Prussian blue is much stronger than phthalo blue. It's very, very strong. Just working that blue. around like he did. I'm and not going to add the darker blue because this look lighter, I'm not using oil paints like he is. And we'll accomplish that just like so. All right. And that's as far as I'm going with that. Now maybe, let's see here. I've got several brushes going. Right in here, watch. I want to take Indian yellow. Once again, you need very little paint. Okay. Bob, you're too fast. Too fast, Bob. I need another big brush. Okay. So, I also need a little bit more of my clear. And I'm going to take a drop of the yellow. This is all the Alumalite dye. And use a paintbrush to mix it up because it's easier. So I'm making my own Indian yellow, you guys. Okay, back into it. Let's Indian do this, Bob. It's transparent. Okay, let's go up in here. That's the reason I picked the Indian yellow over the other yellows we use. And I'm going to start right in here. Hmm, we just covered the whole thing. It doesn't matter. Like so. With Indian yellow. But notice we intentionally let a little of that blue come down. The reason is because when we touch it now with this yellow, it's going to create a greenish cast. It's not okay. going to be bright green, but it'll give the indication to the eye that there's green there. Now, if you want it bright green, you can use sap green, which is a very transparent green, or you can just allow more of the blue to come down. Either way. I'm just putting some more blue in there because I was very careful with my blue. Sap green, mix it together. A little more of the crimson and sap. I want it to the ready side. Okay, let me wipe off the old knife. Wipe off and the old knife. Take a little bit of that on the two inch brush. And with that, let's start at the base. I want this to I'm be using my green mixture for so that. Start here and work upward. So it'll well, give it a very dark look back in there. Maybe I should put a little black in. And bring it up to wherever you want it to stop. But isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that so gorgeous? Easy. Okay. Once again, if you've never painted in your whole life, this is one you want to try. We're trying it, Bob. We are yes, trying it. Try. Because you can't make a mistake with it. It's so easy. Now, some people are very happy and very satisfied with their painting if it stops right there. And it's up to you. I'm going to pull a little bit of that color up so it looks like there's some on these tree trunks. <laughs> Sneaky, huh? You can do that let's if you want to. Let's do that. But let's do, let's make this brighter. Like the sun, you know, when you walk through the woods, you can see the sun in the background and it just burns through the trees. And it's so bright, sometimes you can't hardly even make out the, the tree trunks. It's so bright. I'm going to take just the corner. Okay. There you can see it. See, just the corner of the what? brush. And go right into a little bit of the white. Okay, let's go from here. Figure out where the sun lives up in here. Ooh. And I'm, well, I think it's right behind this limb here. Start right over the limb. All right. Because once again, to me, it, when you look at the sun that bright, it's like it just burns right through that tree branch. And you can't see it. It's probably something in your eyes. I'll have to get an optometrist to explain all that to me. But... But this is the way I see it. There. But just go right over it. 
But look at that sun coming through there now. I'm going to add a little bit of this white gesso to mm. my transparent so I can get a little bit brighter in there. For a long time I wanted to make effects like this, but I, think I didn't really know how to do it and make it look right. And then when they came out with all the, the gessos like this, it made it so Woo! easy. It's not as easy as he's making Anybody it look, guys. Look. Not as easy. Anybody can do it. Let me get a clean brush. Anybody can do it. And in your world, you should be able to do anything that you want to do. All right. You have to decide how bright the sun is and how far it goes out. Totally and completely up to you. But look at it, it's so bright it almost hurts the eyes. Sometimes, sometimes it's fun to make like light rays zinging through there. Now, you know, if the whole painting is wet, that's well, hard to do. Because when you pull it across there, it's going to take you wet paint. But this is dry underneath. The gesso is dry. So we can, it, it's easier to show you. All you have to do is just decide where it lives. See, touch it and then give it a little pull. Because you're not going to destroy anything. Let me get a little bit of water. See the light coming right through those trees? I see it, Bob. I need a little water. Um, hopefully I can moisten this up a little bit. He's got that, um, the clear going for him underneath that I don't have to move the paint around. So I'm just going to pause him for a second and I'm going back in with my white he made that look really easy I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to hopefully blend out some of this where my paint is wanting to stay. No mistakes, you guys. Just happy accidents. if you guys know or not or if I mentioned it in the beginning of the video but today is Bob Ross's birthday we need to give him a little love for inspiring creativity of the masses for many many years And for whatever reason, my paint wants to not stick to that middle section. Right there where I need it to. So I'm going to keep brushing this back and forth in the hopes that I can get rid of this nice little ring that has been created on my cup. and just try to work all of that inward to that concentrated area. What he's working with is significantly different than what I'm working with. So I'm not going to be able to get that same blend that he's getting, but I'm hoping that I can get close. I just keep mixing a little bit of that white with the clear.
Okay. So not having the tools that Mr. Bob Ross has and not having the, the same blending capabilities is proving to be very difficult. So I'm just going to take some water and I'm going to try to remove a little bit Like you said, you can remove it, even with a little paper towel, I think is how he put it. <laughs> so I got it wet with the brush. And I'm just gonna take my paper towel and wipe some of that moisture off. No mistakes, just happy accidents. Okay, so we still have our light source. We still have all of our trees. I've done something there with some gray paint where I need some blue. putting a little bit more blue over the back side where this cup is supposed to be darker. Taking it right down into the green and just leaving, there's a spot right here of a gray branch that didn't get the little bit of detailing that it needs. So I'm just gonna add that now. Just gonna go back over some of these little branches. That I lost when I did that highlight. You can see what I'm doing. Back in the black gesso now. I lost a few of my details and it started to look a little muddy. So I'm just painting those back in. This big tree here. a few of my highlights back in. I don't want to mess with this too much, but I do want some of those details that we spent so long doing to show. So you guys, Bob Ross is like a mad scientist. He is amazing.
Okay. I think what I'll do is I'll just keep adding some little personal details to this. But that is it. That is how, let me get rid of that. That is how he does it. He does all of the black and white and then brushes the color over the top of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finalize this and then I will be back to put the epoxy on the top. The cup turning on the turner in front of my space heater getting completely dry so I can show you guys the next step with the epoxy. Um, I really, really enjoyed doing that. I'm gonna turn the camera up on me in just a second, but first, we have to clean up our mess. And if you guys have watched a Bob Ross tutorial, you know he uses oil paints. I did not use oil paints, but I'm still going to clean my brushes in water because I use the gesso, I use the dye. So I'm gonna clean it in there, tap off the excess, and I don't have an easel, so I am going to beat the devil out of it on my towel because no Bob Ross video is complete until you beat the devil out of it. I really do encourage you guys to jump on and follow some of his tutorials because they are amazing. I'm gonna continue cleaning these brushes and I will be back in just a few minutes. Okay, you guys, all I have done since I ended the last part is I've mixed up my epoxy. I've let the cup dry. I did add a little bit of my Elements glitter in the color Wind. It's just an ultra fine holographic. So I did add that to the epoxy, just a tiny, tiny little bit on the edge of a spoon, like a little teeny tiny bit. And I have two tablespoons of epoxy mixed. I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough, but I didn't wanna mix too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying this. I know the cup looks wet, but some of the medium that I used was glossy. So it just looks wet, it's not wet. I apologize if you cannot see what I'm doing here, but I will show you after I have all the epoxy on. I'm just going going like every couple inches, I lay a strip of epoxy and move it back and forth. That way I can get coverage all the way around the cup and then I can start moving it this way and just add more as needed. I need a little bit more right there, so I'm just going to use my finger and do that. I need a little more right there. I'm just going to keep going back and forth over this until I know that the entire cup has a coating of epoxy. All right, so there is a tiny bit of epoxy left in the cup. I'm gonna do what is considered to be a flood coat. I'm just gonna take what's left of the epoxy and I'm gonna just gently, gently drizzle a little stream all the way around the cup. I'm not dumping, I'm just drizzling back and forth. This is not a necessary step. This is just what I do after I have a, a thin coat of epoxy on there. If I have any left in my cup at all, then I do this. It just assures that I don't have any bare spots on my cup whatsoever. All right. Now that that's done, I am gonna take my finger 
and I'm just going to smooth any places that look like they need to have a little smoothing. Epoxy is self-leveling. So as long as you don't have like 10 ounces of epoxy poured on here, it's gonna even itself out. But I just want to make sure. I don't have any epoxy that's running. That's what I don't want. Okay. So let me bring you guys down here. I'm gonna pause you. This is what we created. This is how the cup will look once the epoxy has cured. If you guys can join me in wishing Mr. Bob Ross a happy, happiest of birthdays. This is in honor of everything he has taught us and all the inspiration he's given over the years. Such a cool dude. If you guys aren't familiar with Bob Ross, look him up, check him out, watch his little biography that's on YouTube. He's a very, very interesting guy. Hope you enjoyed the, this video, you guys. Um, I really had a good time making it, and I hope I didn't bore you to death. <laughs> Sorry about all the cutting out, but... It is what it is. It's real live art. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.